All right, so um, I've opened my CBDB project from uh, Thursday. Uh, we've got here our index HTML file, which is very basic. Remember, we cleaned everything out about it, and we just have the very simple CBDB H1. So uh, this project, um, it's missing everything that we did from last month. So we're going to spend some time today to uh, import or migrate the things that we did last month into this month's project. So in the network folder, if you need a copy of it, in the network folder, I've got a folder in there with uh, 227. Now, this version of the uh, CBDB project from last month is not as good as the one you made. When you, when you did your evaluation on, on that Thursday, that was the one where you added your text and your graphics and your colors and such. This one right here is a version of mine without that. It's fine if you use it. Obviously, you want to use yours instead because yours has your colors, your graphics, and all of that. But if you just need a starting point, it'll be perfectly fine for you to grab a copy of that from the MAD2 folder, put that on your desktop for the moment. And we're going to copy files from this project into our current project. I'll explain which ones, of course. So I'm going to copy from the network folder 2018-0227 to my desktop. I just need a copy of it temporarily. Uh, then I'm going to get items from that folder and put them into my current folder. So here's the idea. Within, the, uh, within last month's project folder, we have all of these pieces that we need to integrate into this month's project. This is the 0227 file. We have our custom JavaScript and our images and all of that. So some of the things we'll just be able to easily drag and drop from one folder into our project, and other things we'll need to copy and paste. Um, the order of this doesn't quite matter, but I think maybe we'll start with images first. Now, you see inside of the CBDB project, we have an images folder already. So we need to copy the stuff inside of the images folder, so you can open the images folder. And all of these files, you can copy all of that, just drag it and drop it into Visual Studio into the images folder. So from this folder here on my desktop, I can just select those and drop them into Visual Studio. Usually takes a little moment, it looks like it's stuck. But what's happening is it's copying those files, and it's keeping track of the files, and it's writing stuff inside of config XML or somewhere. So it might take a moment. So the, the items in the images folder of 0227, drag them into images folder of CBDB in Visual Studio. If I back up here to the root, we've got jQuery Mobile CSS, jQuery Mobile JS, jQuery Mobile Map, jQuery JS, and then my JavaScript JS. Well, the uh, jQuery Mobile.css, you can drag and drop that pretty straightforward into the CSS folder. So from my 0227, you want to drag jQuery.css. Be careful about the extensions here. You want the CSS file, drag that and drop it into CSS folder. So from the last month's project, I dragged it, dropped it into this month's project, CSS folder, jQuery. CSS. These 
next ones here, that's JavaScript. This is related to the JavaScript file, and this one is also JavaScript. So then the jQuery JS and jQuery map and jQuery JS here, those three, put those into your scripts folder. So you can just drag them out of there, drop them in. Okay, so I took those three JavaScript files and I put them into scripts folder. jQuery mobile min JS, jQuery mobile min map, and jQuery min JS. Yes. Does the order of those matter in the solution explorer? It's just alphabetical. If they get out of order alphabetically, it doesn't matter. They're just files in the folder. Yes? Your CSS file goes in the CSS folder, and your JavaScript files go in the JavaScript folder. You're opening your SLN file from your flash drive. Remember, you have uh, your project on your flash drive. You, you're going to open the SLN file. You the file open project solution, and then you find it. Mm -hmm. So then here, we've got the... Uh, my JavaScript, uh, we're not going to drag that one in because in a moment we're going to integrate the code inside of this file. We're going to copy the code inside of it into index.js. There's already an index.js file with our custom JavaScript. We'll do that one in a moment. Um, same thing with index.html. Uh, it should make sense that I don't want to uh, simply drag my index file into the Explorer here because we've already got an index. And that index file has various settings and setup that we don't want to lose. Um, so we need to copy the code inside of index.html into the index.html in the solution. So I think just temporarily what we can do inside of your 027, you can do right click and edit with notepad plus plus. I want to look at the code itself. So for a moment, I'll open up notepad plus plus to, um, to, to, to view the code. And then in Visual Studio, I'm going to open the index HTML file. So the idea is that in uh, Notepad++, we've got approximately 200 lines of code. And then in Visual Studio, we've got these 25 lines of code. The one in Visual Studio is very basic, um, very simple template. Whereas the code in Notepad, uh, this is our complete project from last month. Looking at it side by side a little bit, in Visual Studio, we've already got the doc type, line one, HTML head, we've got meta car set, meta viewport, and such. Uh, so we're going to copy some items over from Notepad and uh, paste them into Visual Studio. Um, we've got, um, let's see, the viewport is fine. OK, the main thing that we're going to need to copy is from the Notepad file, line seven. We've got this link over to uh, jQuery mobile. Um, actually, let me show it to you this way. Instead of copying and pasting it, uh, we'd have to change that href path. Let me show you something cool here in Visual Studio instead. Uh, I want to add this link in the head. Let's write it manually, but we'll see how Visual Studio can let us write it a lot easier. Go back to your Visual Studio, and then we'll add a line 16. And then we'll start the tag link. I want, to do, I want to write the link tag. And the reason I want to do it manually is because, again, I really like the Visual Studio code editor. 
as I start writing link, remember you can just press tab and then it'll fill in the rest. You press space. Because, okay, usually when you have a link tag, you have one of these other things. So you can see there in the list as then you start to type um, rel. You can press tab. It pops up. I said, okay, when you've got a link tag, you've got a rel attribute, it already fills in quotes and stuff. Usually then, and there is going to be some style sheet, and as you start typing sty, it pops up here. Do you mean style sheet? I'll press tab. It'll write it for me. Space. Well, when you've got a link tag with a rel attribute, usually you have something else. What's the something else? href, exactly. So as you start typing href, you know, you can use your arrow keys to find the right tag there, or the right attribute. Tab that. Types it for you. Now this is really cool. Uh, instead of having to type the name of the file, this pops up here, which shows you a little path, where then you can use your arrow keys or the mouse, and you move around here. Okay, my CSS is in my CSS file. Tab. And then inside of there, moving around, my jQuery file. Tab. And then it types it all for you. So instead of doing it manually, this pops up to kind of guide you. And then I close the tag, angle bracket. Now this one does use the version where it's got a slash there, which is fine. But that line right there, we could have copied it from Notepad. We'd have to change it slightly because now our jQuery CSS file is in a CSS folder. Whereas last month we had everything in one root folder. Well, now that we've put the CSS code in a CSS file, the full path to it <coughs> needs to be like that. And in a moment when we do JavaScript, well, the JavaScript is in a script folder instead of the root folder. So we've added the jQuery library. Next, we need to add the... Um, next, we need to add the... Uh, JavaScript libraries. Notice down here at the bottom, at about line 21, it connects to Cordova, then Platform Overrides, then Custom JavaScript. Uh, we're going to add the, um, the link or the reference over to uh, jQuery and then jQuery Mobile on line 21. So again here, line 21, as you start your script tag, If you want, you can add this one that says type of text, JavaScript, if you want. Not really necessary, because nowadays in modern HTML5, it's assumed that any script is JavaScript. So these lines are kind of a little bit superfluous. So I personally wouldn't write it. I would skip the type. It's going to assume it's JavaScript. I'm going to add the source, and then when I tab that, it pops up. You know, you can use the mouse inside of scripts. I'm going to find first jQuery. Close that angle bracket. It also closes your pair. Pair of tags. Next line. I'm going to connect over then to jQuery mobile. Script src scripts jQuery Mobile JS. And again, this can be typed pretty quick once you get used to that as the pop-ups happen. You can press tab, and if you're if the suggestion that is there pops up, you can just press tab and it'll fill in the rest for you. Right? Etc. Sometimes as you're writing this code, actually this might get in your way. You can ignore it. But if it gets in your way, you can also press escape on the keyboard. Like, never mind, I don't need that hint. And somewhere in the settings, you can fully turn that off. But as you're writing code and it's popping up, you can press escape and say, never mind, I'll do it myself. So this is the index file in our Visual Studio project. Uh, we've added the 
the link to the CSS file. Notice also as you roll over, as you hover over various tags, Visual Studio pops up to give you kind of a little hint. What is the meta tag? What, what does the link tag do? What is script? And you can always go learn more and learn even more about the code. So we added the link to the CSS file, and then we added the link to the two JavaScript files. Yes. What about the what? Can you say that a little bit louder? I can't hear you. jQuery tem. Which one is that? The different columns. Oh, you can theme. Oh, theme. Okay. Yes. Uh, well, this is uh, uh, on yours. You do want to connect to that theme. On mine, because I'm using my version that is incomplete, I don't have it. But on yours, you do want to add it because you want your colors. I'm using my version um, that is basic before the assessment. So for the purposes of the class at the moment, you can add it or not. But when the next assessment comes at the end of the month, it will need to be there. So the, the rest of this, um, from bottom <coughs> line 10 all the way line to 200 or whatever that is, we need to copy everything between body and simply copy and paste it after body. We don't need that H1 anymore, line 19, because we've got this body that is much better, much better much better defined. So in Visual Studio, you don't need that line 19 anymore. And then in Notepad, you need to copy everything from body to body. So just about 200 lines from body right before your, right before your jQuery. We've already got jQuery there and such. You need to copy all of that in body and just paste it in there inside of body line 19. So pretty much all the meta tags that were already there under the head block are, are exactly what we want. All of this stuff about form detection and tap highlight and the viewport, all of those that were there with the, with the basic Visual Studio template, we want to keep all of that. We added then the style sheet uh, to jQuery. Uh, we added the style sheet to jQuery after, uh, oh, actually that should be backwards, oh, okay. Yeah, um, we've added jQuery here, but we actually should add it before this custom CSS. I almost missed that. So here's what I mean. Uh, line 14 and, 14 and 16. Remember, the code is basically processed from top to bottom. So technically what we're saying here is go down to, to line 14, load up any custom code that we might have, like custom sizes of fonts and stuff. But then we're saying load the basic jQuery. So that happens second, which might take precedence. It might take over. So actually, we should have added this jQuery CSS file before line 14. We want to start, we want to load the basic jQuery library of styling <coughs> first. Then we want to have our own custom CSS file. This is where we're going to change our CSS, changing fonts when we do that eventually, tweaking sizes and alignment and stuff in that index file. So we want the basic one. Now as for your own custom theme, uh, you're going to add it um, in between. I'll just make the note here. 
your custom theme roller code goes here. So we've got the basic jQuery library. We've got yours that you got from Theme Roller. Then we've got the custom one, which will then be extra tweaks that we will add throughout part two of the class. And body starts and we've got all of those sections articles and all of that that we worked on for a while you go past all of that 200 lines later you get to the very end where we load up the basic jQuery file then we load up the uh, jQuery mobile and we've got Cordova <coughs> very important to have that one that's the one that allows us to write the JavaScript shortcuts which then get translated over to the appropriate language per platform. We've got platform overrides where if we wanted to do custom code per platform, if I want the Android version of my code to do something, it would be in there. If I want the iPhone version to do something else, it would be in there. And then we've got our custom JavaScript which is going to be all of that log in, log out code. I'm going to save index.html. I'm going to go back to the folder. I'm going to go back to the folder of um, 227, and I want to edit the my JavaScript file. You want to right-click my JavaScript JS, edit with Notepad plus plus. In Visual Studio, I want to open index.js inside of the scripts folder. So index.js in the Visual Studio folder is also a basic skeleton. It's got our function that handles what happens when you resume, when you go back to the app, what happens when you leave the app, what happens when the Cordova code is loaded into memory. And all of this is inside of an immediately invoked function expression. And as we have here on line 15, uh, perform any initialization that requires Cordova. All of our, <coughs> all of our code um, basically needs to be inside of on-device ready. So from the, from the um, notepad file from last month's code, we're basically going to copy and paste all of that into line 18 inside of on device ready. Let's see. So obviously we don't need this first function part or use strict. It's already there. We have then our notes of variables. It goes all the way down to function logout. We don't need this final pair of parentheses and such. It's already there. So from last month's project, you need, if your, if your line numbers line up, from in my case, it's line 10, right after your use strict, all the way down to the second to the last line, excluding the final parentheses. L button log out. So I'm going to copy that those 180 lines or so and paste them all on line 18 inside of on device ready so I'm copying there and I'm pasting into here
And now that we've got Visual Studio, remember we've got this uh, this sort of like error checker that I showed previously. Anyone remember how to get to that error checking screen? View. View. View error list, exactly. Uh, just in case, you might have copied and pasted a little bit wrong, maybe. So let's go over to View Menu Error List, and let's see if it pops up to tell you if you've got any problems. So in my case, it, it says I've got three warnings. And remember, um, warnings are OK if they happen. Your code will still run. They should be fixed, of course. Errors, if you have errors, that's definitely bad. You want to fix the errors. In my case, it says that the Cordova.js file is missing. But of course, I said last time, you're not going to see it. That's one that you just need to live with. Ignore that. But in my case, I also have here missing a semicolon in my index.js file, line 191 and 192. But this all worked perfectly last time. Yes, it did. But if you take a look there, if you double click the error, it jumps you exactly where you need to go. Technically, what we've got on lines 191 and 192 or so is something like this. Don't do this. But if I separate it like this, then it's obvious that I'm missing a semicolon at the end of that line. But when we had it as one line, it's not obvious that there's a missing semicolon right there. When I break it apart from curly brace to curly brace, and if that's on its own line, obviously curly brace, uh, obviously semicolon. So for me, line 191 and 192, I need a semicolon there before the end of the curly braces from this function. So I'm going to leave it as one line, but just to show you, what that warning is telling you is there should be a semicolon right after function sign up event and function log in event. Once you add those and save it, these, uh, those warnings should go away. So this worked perfectly fine last month, and it would continue to work without those semicolons. But I wanted to remind you about that error list. I think it's very useful. Uh, we're start. We're going to get to the harder parts of the class starting this month, and a lot could go wrong. In that I misspelled something. Uh, I thought I typed it exactly right. It looks exactly like yours, but then we look at that error list, and it tells you, "Oh, you missed something on line 12." So definitely look at that screen for more help. So again, I'm going to ignore this one. Or one way to fix it is to click right here. Don't show me warnings. Great. Out of sight, out of mind. So I've been working on two files. You should get used to hitting the Save All button, because you need all your files saved before you do any testing and such, any deployment. So um, uh, what you should do is um, now choose a device or a simulator and, and run it. We're going to take our first break here. Uh, so you want to make sure that this is working properly. I'm going to click that. Uh, try to run it on a device, real or virtual. See if it's supposed to look like last month. Um, Test it out in the browser and the device. Remember, um, now we're going to be using Visual Studio as, as our way that we run the project. It's about 7.11. We'll take a break until 8.11 if it's working great. If not, uh, call me over, and then we'll continue with getting this to work. Break till 8.11? 8.11?